The year is 2004. The world has just been put back on its axis owing to the rise of Pokemon and the spate of competitive battle games what followed in its wake. The Maelstrom was thought to be over until... The Card Battle Games attacked. Everything you loved and held dear was turned into a card battling monstrosity. Funny thing was, though, a few of those games were pretty darn good. Not all the time, but sometimes the grainier mechanics of such a system just kind of clicked. Back on the Game Boy Advance, this really hit home with two particular titles that adapted and indeed flourished in this strange format. Mega Man Battle Network and Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Heal. In this direct sequel to Kingdom Hearts, everyone forgets everything and you end up going through all the places you'd already been through, trying desperately to remember just what the hell you're doing there in the first place. Part of it may or may not be related to searching for King Mickey in the creepily named Castle Oblivion, where each floor has to be turned into a locale like Pumpkin Town or Agrabah and quested through because... Wait, what was I saying again? Oh yeah, as you can probably tell, this isn't the Game Boy Advance version. Rather, it's the HD PS3 remake of the PS2 remake Re-Chain of Memories. Where the original had an isometric viewpoint and sprite-based graphics, this version uses much the same assets and controls as its PS2 or PS3 counterparts. While I've mentioned my issues with the mechanics of said titles, I've gotta say, by slowing down the pace of the game just a smidge and allowing for greater strategic planning through the manipulation of a deck, the combat seems to flow much more smoothly. By combining sets of three cards, you can utilize special attacks, upgrade spells, and if you happen to get really, really lucky when buying randomized packs of cards from the friendly Moogles along your journey, just open up every fight with a level 3 Simba summon and wipe out a large chunk of the enemy force. This also increases the value of the attacks you make, which becomes important as foes can interrupt your actions by playing higher value attacks. If you run out of cards, you can reload your hand by standing still and being vulnerable for a while which is obviously exactly what you want to be doing in the middle of a fight. Survive and you're rewarded with a room card, which determines the contents behind the next door you open. It's a strange, modular world-building system that gives the player a lot of control, allowing for a safe point or enemy-free treasure room, or an absolute maelstrom of fodder enemies for grinding purposes. Level up bonuses can teach new slight combos, increase Sora's max HP, or boost the total card value allowed in each of three equipable decks. As it's derived from a GBA game, there isn't much vocal work to speak of, though the PS2 adaptation added some cutscenes which have been ps 3 eyes for optimal duck feather display purposes. The soundtrack feels free to turn on the intensity during battle scenes, with tracks appropriate to each locale, while the modular world chunks are well detailed and reward any schmo who wanders through beating any and all pieces of scenery with an oversized key. Yes, it'll feel weird to play such gritty, math-centric action on a proper console, just like Mega Man Network transmission felt weird. But there are those of us of a certain disposition who relish the thought of deck optimization and making the most out of every available point. The obvious heartless of the cards joke is left as an exercise to the reader. <laughs> 